What if I told you that this PowerShell script of only 36 lines could steal your credentials, your cryptocurrency wallets, and anything else that you might copy to your clipboard? Although it's so rudimentary and primitive, uh -huh. it works. And there's just something about that that you have to admire and marvel the brilliance of. So let's take a look at how simple this clipper functions. This clipper is using PowerShell and what it's doing is adding .NET assemblies. Now these DLLs that it is using within its script are from the Windows Presentation Foundation DLLs. Things that are used for when you're creating a .NET application, giving you a graphical user interface. Now, why would it need to use these? I'll show you in just a bit. First off, let's look at this function, dischat. Dischat is taking a parameter given, which is content, and then it's also defining a hook URL. Now, this is where the data is going to be sent to. It's defining a username, and that is taking the username from your operating system environment variable. So it's getting your username for the computer system. It's then taking the content and posting all of this to that hook URL. What it's doing here under this chat when it runs, straight away when it runs, it's going to get the contents of your clipboards and post it to that webhook. Then while one, which basically means while true and considering there's nothing to define it not as true, it will always be running. So while this is running, it's defining a few different variables, your left control, your right control, your C and your X key. Now at first, I didn't think there was anything too remarkable about this. And yet I still don't think that there's anything too remarkable about this. And that's the beauty of it. It's just using the native APIs to detect whether you have your control key down and then whether you have your C or X key down for copy or cut. And if you do, it's going to invoke that method and post it off to the webhook, thus taking the contents of your clipboard and sending it somewhere else. So I'm going to take this script and update the hook URL to something that I control. In this particular case, I'm going to change it from webhook.site to a particular Discord webhook that I have set up. And if I go and update this webhook to it, now what I can do is save this script and actually just see whether it functions right. And what we start getting into our Discord channel. Make sure that we can see what's in our Discord channel first. And now run the script with PowerShell. And my security settings might actually be set up so this, this asks me to allow the script to run. But in a lot of cases, depending on how this is being deployed, you're not going to have that prompt and it's just going to run. It could actually be that this is just functioning now. Yeah, without uh, any kind of restriction. Well, you can already see, I didn't even notice, but it's already sent the webhook that was in my clipboard off to our Discord server. You can see it's been sent as Barry, which is the username on this particular system. So let's make sure that it works if we use any of our keyboard shortcuts. I'm gonna just open up Notepad and maybe just type something like, yeah, this is super secret credentials and shit to access crypto wallets. And let's say I needed this and I use the old control C or control X. Sorry, in that particular case, I actually hit control V to paste. So that was stupid. Um, but let's say, let's say I actually want to want to do this and I have to copy this, copy that to clipboard. Oh, it's there. What if I cut this? Oh, it's there almost immediately. What if I copy this file? Nothing happens. If I control C the file, you'll see the big error message on the particular script because what the get clipboard module in PowerShell is doing is only supportive for plain text strings. 
or just strings in general, right? But anything that we copy in that particular regard, let's say it's a password, we take this, yep, we take this, we've kind of proven the fact, right, that everything we copy is winding up in this Discord channel. So this is something to be aware of, something that's a bit interesting, and I thought it was kind of cool that no matter how primitive this PowerShell script is, it functions. You don't have to stand up any kind of infrastructure. So I will say the sample was downloaded uh, by Malware Bazaar, uh, and it was uploaded by Paul, who found it on Pastebin. So thanks so much for sharing that with the community, Paul. Uh, I will say that it was tagged up as Posh C2. I believe this is from a Yara rule, and it's not actually the, the Posh C2 framework. There's PowerShell Webhook Keylogger, which I guess is an app's name. I mean, a PowerShell Webhook Clipper might be slightly more accurate, but nonetheless, it kind of gives the idea of what this script is intending to do. So there you go. Take a look at it and um, let me know what you think.